Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? It's Joe here from Spain Speaks with an update video. Today we'll have a bit of a chat about what's going on. We'll go into the newspapers and check out what is happening there. Then at the end of the video we'll go into the comment section and take a look at what is happening there. Also, there's plenty of news around today, a lot of it related to the tourist sector in Spain. As we know, August is traditionally the busiest month for the tourist sector in the country. In a normal year, millions and millions of people would fly into the country to spend their summer holidays in Spain. But this year, as we know, international figures are a bit down because a lot of countries don't want their citizens traveling to Spain at the moment. And some of the popular foreign hotspots in the country, for example, Magaluf in Mallorca, has a different look about it this year. As we can see from this headline, un magaluf menos británico. El perfil del turista en Baleares cambia con las restricciones. So less British magaluf, the profile of the tourist in the Balearic Islands changes with the restrictions. Although the United Kingdom decided last week to place Spain on the amber list of destinations, preventing people with the full vaccination schedule from serving a 10-day quarantine upon their return, the tourist season is not meeting expectations, especially in those destinations in which British tourism is the main one. So there we go, a less British Magaluf. We also saw yesterday that in places like Benidorm, which is another popular British holiday destination in Spain, Spanish tourism is making up the numbers there. I think in the article we saw yesterday, a lot of the hotels in that part of the world are doing reasonably well, 70% occupancy rates at the moment, and a more traditional Spanish holiday maker profile keeping the sector afloat in those coastal areas. So some tourist hotspots appear to be doing okay, according to the Spanish press, even without British tourists. And even though people in the UK that are fully vaccinated and no longer need to quarantine on return, a lot are not deciding to come to Spain. And maybe headlines like this one in the mail have something to do with it. Think twice before coming to Spain. British tourists queue for two hours to get through passport control at Malaga after three hours of COVID admin to board flight. Queue snake 500 meters up and down corridors in Malaga Air Airport on Tuesday. Brits have been warned not to travel to Spain after holiday makers queued for two hours to get through passport control at Malaga Airport on Tuesday. One man who flew in from London Heathrow on Tuesday morning said people should think twice before coming to Spain after the ordeal. And he went on to say that he definitely would not want to go through all this again for a short holiday to Spain. So the anti-Spain press in the UK added again, telling people to think twice before they visit the country. Now, keeping on the subject of international tourism in Spain and how many people have visited Spain in 2021, we can see here from this headline that España recibió casi 5,5 millones de turistas durante la primera mitad de 2021. So Spain received almost 5.5 million tourists during the first half of 2021. The tourists who have visited the country the most have been the French and Germans mainly. So 5.5 million international tourists visiting the country in the first half of 2021, and of course that figure is well down on pre-pandemic levels. Now we'll turn our attention to the hospitality sector in Spain, and an interesting article that caught my attention earlier today. Los subidos de la hostelería dejan un agujero en el sector en plena temporada de verano. So the hospitality fugitives leave a hole in the sector in the middle of the summer season. The construction sector assures that it needs more workers before the arrival of European funds. So the hospitality sector in Spain having trouble finding workers because they're all going into construction. As we saw there, the construction sector or the building sector in Spain rubbing its hands with glee because of all that European money that's coming into the country and it's sucking up all of the workers and bars and restaurants around the country are having a hard time trying to find staff. Now I don't know about you, but this is setting off alarm bells for me because back in the early 2000s, Spain had the exact same problem. Everybody was working in the construction sector, then all of a sudden that bubble burst and Spain experienced one of its worst crises in history with massive unemployment and millions of people having to leave the country. So let's hope that this is not a question of history repeating itself in Spain. Now we'll leave the news there and go into the comment section and check out what's happening there today. One here from A. Nelson, at least Spain is dealing with the corruption. In the UK, there are ministers using personal emails, another minister has damaged his phone to avoid scrutiny, and billions of pounds in contracts are going to cronies. All this sanctioned by a PM who lies at the drop of a hat. Well done, Spain. Small steps, but it's a good start. Yeah, thanks for the comment. Obviously related to a story that we saw yesterday about how an ex-premier of the Madrid community is up on corruption charges because he gave contracts to his brother and his brother-in-law for a golf course that was being built in Madrid. This is not a new case. It goes back a few years to the dark days of the Partido Popular, and it is just one of the many corruption scandals that have plagued that political party 
over the last 10 years or so. But you're right, corruption is not unique to Spain. In fact, I don't think there's a country in the world that is free of corruption. It is unfortunately a very common occurrence and it seems to be part of human nature. But I get the impression that in some countries, politicians try to be a little bit more discreet when it comes to corruption and not giving contracts to people like their brother or brother-in-laws, which I imagine are fairly easy to detect. One here from Zini. Can anyone from Canada buy a villa in Spain legally? No hassle. Yeah, Zini, thanks for the comment. I don't believe it's too difficult to buy a house from outside the European Union. For example, people from Canada, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, etc. And that's right, the UK. As long as you've got the cash, I don't think there are too many barriers. It might be a different story if you have to get a mortgage. And of course, if you invest a lot of money in the country, you might even be able to get a golden visa. But I remember seeing comments from other non-EU citizens that have property in Spain. So if you've got any tips for Zini on the best way to get it done, let us know in the comment section below. One here from Philip. Cash, it's become a two-tier system. The haves and the have-nots. Nothing to do with money, everything to do with the ability to access the internet. For people unable to use it, it must be a living nightmare and very expensive. Fines for late payments or non-payment of bills. Yeah, Philip, thanks for the comment. And you're right, cash does seem to be coming a two-tier system at the moment. And if you don't know how to use the internet, pretty difficult to access your bank. In fact, my bank in Spain seems to be pushing me every day more and more towards their mobile app. And I even got a letter from my bank back at the beginning of July telling me that during the month of August, my bank wasn't going to be open. And if I wanted to do banking services, it would have to be through the app. I don't know whether it's just me, but every time I go into a bank branch in Spain, I get the feeling that the people working there don't want to have contact with other humans. So a definite push towards online banking. One here from Dunk Yo, does anyone come across problems not being able to pay in, give banks money at certain times? The bank is open but won't accept cash payments. Unbelievable. Yeah, Dunk Yo, thanks for the comment and a similar comment to the one we just saw. And you're also right, banks do not like to take cash payments. In fact, they're trying to avoid people coming into branches to pay things like bills. In fact, my local branch only has a two hour window open from nine to 11 to pay bills. And I think it's got something to do with the fact that banks don't consider bill payments a valued service. And they want people to set up a direct debit system or what's known in Spanish as domiciliar, and the money gets taken out of your account automatically each month when the bill is due. When it comes to making cash deposits, they want you to use the ATM. One here from JCS, when will we see as part of Spain, paperless and smart, start installing self-scan tills like most of Europe did 20 years ago to make the Spanish customer service sector more customer focused? which it presently largely lacks, would also eradicate the vacant tills which are never staffed. Or is this the old issue of how many people does it take to change one light bulb? Yeah, JCS, thanks for the comment. I think it depends on which supermarket chain you go to as to whether or not there are self-scanning tills. If you go to a supermarket like Mercadona, Lidl, Aldi, for example, you won't see self-scanning tills. But if you go to one like Carrefour, you will, even though they don't work very well. Some places that are really pushing self-scan tills are the French giants in Spain, Leroy Merlin and Decathlon. In fact, my local Decathlon doesn't have anybody working the tills anymore. It's all self-scan. But some of the big supermarket chains, like the one I mentioned before, Mercadona, doesn't seem to be moving towards this system, and I don't know the reason for that. So if anybody's got any ideas on why that is the case at Mercadona that you can't use a self-scanning till, please let us know in the comment section below. And finally, one here from Charlotte, what is the Robinson List? Yeah, Charlotte, thanks for the comment. The Robinson List is a web page where you can add your details, for example, your phone number, your address, your name, etc. And then people who are trying to sell you things by phone won't bother you anymore. I used to get about three, four, five phone calls a week from telephone companies. Orange is a real problem company. Insurance companies can also be a bit of a problem. But since I put my number on this list, no more phone calls. So if you don't want these telephone spammers to give you a call and try to offer you a product that you don't need, put your name on the list. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.